The Syntax of Things by Arisha, Chapter 47, Parentheses, Red and White. A punch landed on Severus's nose and Severus grunted in shock as he dodged another and pulled himself up to a sitting position. He pushed Potter off him and watched as the boy rolled onto his belly, covered his face with an elbow and grunted. Severus reached out to poke him in the ribs, his other hand still covering his attacked nose. Potter! Potter hummed in acknowledgement. Potter, wake up! Mwick, Potter mumbled as he yawned and stretched. He blindly raised a hand to drag Severus back down to the bed by his robes, but instead caught hold of his hair. Severus hissed in pain as his head was forced back on the pillows, and he untangled the fingers off him with disgust, scowling at the ceiling. As soon as he was lying down again, a leg was draped over his own, and a giddy face found its way to his neck, his heart beating fast in panic. Severus pushed Potter away and got up. What time is it? asked Potter. Almost noon. I'm leaving. Is there anything you need? Potter chuckled into his pillow. Yeah. Good morning, Potter, Severus growled. Again, focus. Harry nodded. He felt Snape push into his mind, his dark eyes locked with his own, as he consumed Harry's magic with his ferocity. Fight it. I don't even know what I'm fighting complained Harry in a low tone. This was more confusing than the legitimacy, and he felt slightly caught off guard. Then you don't know yourself. What made you think I know myself in the first place? Harry searched through his own thoughts for the implanted one, but fell miserably at locating it. I'm not really hungry, he said testily. Save smirked again. Harry sighed and rolled his eyes, breaking the eye contact. A cold hand grasped his chin, and Snape met his eyes once more with an intensity no human being should have. I don't know what it is. I quit. Spill the beans. He gave a cheeky grin and waited for the revelation. Apparently, Snape wasn't going to make it so easy for him, though. He quirked his lips. Tell me what you were thinking of. Harry felt his heart skip a beat. Why did the man have to torture him all the time? Um, that I was hungry, that I have an itch on my nose. That you're beautiful. That this room would be better off painted red, like the Gryffindor Common Room or Slughorn's Library, for example. The walls here are kind of sad. They remind me of my aunt's room before she put up that floor wallpaper. Gross. Oh, and that if I ever get out of here again, I'll go blind. I mean, it's too dark in here. I'm kind of getting used to it. And that I... He swallowed, deciding that the rest was better left unsaid. That is all. Snape raised an eyebrow. That is all. Yeah. Could it be this? He was pretty sure that this particular thought was his own. He felt the humiliation coming as he risked a hint. He didn't want to lose. And your shirt. My shirt. Snape was doing it again. That expression between panic and bursting into laughter that only existed to serve his interaction with dumb Harry James Potter and his pathetic attempts at flirtation. Harry returned the stare steadily as he silently accepted the fact that he had made himself twice the full and could do nothing about it but keep going. Well, might as well see where it'd get him. Yes, it's a bit tighter on you than last summer. You must have put on some weight. It suits you, and you haven't buttoned it all the way up. I think you did that on purpose. Snape frowned, and Harry grinned. In that, at least, he could win. He watched Snape try to put his shock under control. I was like, that, not shock, embarrassment, offense, some kind of bizarre surprise at Harry's insolence. Or honesty. Is that how you're planning to defeat the Dark Lord, Potter? Harry shrugged his shoulders teasingly. You never know, he might be charmed. <laughs> Snape rolled his eyes and summoned two glasses of water. Harry emptied his and placed it on the floor. So, what was it? The color red, Snape said. Harry tilted his head. But I wasn't thinking of the color red. You thought that the room should be painted red, which, by the way, would be dizzying and dreadfully kitsch. The idea of painting was a subconscious interpretation of yours for your thinking of the color red. I made you think of it, however. Harry couldn't help but wonder if this was something that had happened to him before. How could he be sure that everything he thought of was deriving from his own soul? Perhaps he was controlled like that since he was born. He'd have no way of knowing. The train of salt was mine, he said, hoping he was right. Yes, you could have thought of anything at that moment, but it would include red, either you wanted it or not. The rest of it was you. At least he wasn't under the imperious, it was something. Again, Harry nodded. 
He lifted his head and didn't have time to respond because Snape had already started. He tried to relax. That shirt was really nice, Harry thought of himself as lucky to have seen Snape in white. He supposed few people had that opportunity. It made him look healthier, more normal, and Harry had the impression that when he stood, his nipples were almost visible underneath. Focus, Potter. Harry blinked into focus. It occurred to him that Snape was having way too much fun doing this. Of course, Harry could have always refused to be taught this particular aspect of mind control. The silence between them, though, was growing too heavy to bear, and in a moment of despair, he decided to offer his dignity for the sake of training. You didn't find it. I'm in. Already? What? How? Harry shut his eyes, trying to recall everything he had thought of during the last minute. What is it? Snape stretched his legs and caused his eyes up where his chest. You tell me. Fuck, 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 fuck. Harry made a mental note to build himself a statue the day he'd prove himself actually intelligent to the man. Um, nipples? He wished he could dissolve. Snape was momentarily stunned. An expression of utter disbelief was slapped off of his face, and wrinkles of surprise appeared on his forehead. It lasted a second, and then the astonishment was gone. No, Potter, try again. Harry snorted, covering his face with a hand. He allowed himself a moment of laughter, and then he looked at Snape through parted fingers. White? White, agreed Snape, his features screaming, Not nipples! So I won that, said Harry, and jumped up. I found it. White. Snape barely nodded in agreement, muttering something under his breath before summoning the sandwiches from the kitchen. After they ate, Harry knew Snape would leave. His chest tightened at the thought of having to spend the rest of the day alone trapped between these walls. And probably the next one, too. And the next one. Would you send a letter to Hermione if I gave it to you? He asked cautiously, occupying himself with cleaning the bed from the breadcrumbs. I will have to ask the headmaster for permission answered Snape. Thanks. Harry felt the hair on his nape stand up as he cleaned the bedclothes and took the dishes to the kitchen. Snape followed. I take it that you have only written to her, then. He had written to Ron, too. In fact, he was writing to Ron, even when he was still at the dormitory, and Ron was sleeping only a bed away from him. But those were letters he knew he'd never send, and didn't have the right to compose in the first place. The worst part of it was that he knew he'd have Ron's forgiveness if he begged hard enough, and the temptation became too appealing sometimes. Still, despite his desperate need to make amends, he had decided long ago that it'd be best to accept things as they were. A fitting punishment it was. I've no one else to write to, he said simply. Mr. Worsley. Harry chewed on his lip and leaned back against the counter. He took a deep breath, then shook his head. Just your money. The dishes cleaned themselves under the hot water. The sound of the faucet whooshing soothed some part of his brain that screamed for attention on the subject. It occurred to him that not talking about it was probably for the best. Scratching old wounds was dangerous, but poking on recent ones was definitely just painful. Snape seemed to understand. I see. Harry snorted. So, is Malfoy still trying to take over Hogwarts? Snape glared. What makes you think he would ever try such a thing? I'm not stupid. Clearly. Harry sighed, suddenly too exhausted to argue. He shook his head and let his breath come out in a snort. I don't know how you do it. How you can look him in the eye, and although you know everything he has done and is going to do, still obey him instead of, of, I don't know, just raising your wand and killing him. Are you referring to the Dark Lord or Dumbledore? Asked his name. Harry looked at him dumbstruck for a moment, and then he laughed. Both. Dirty. If he finds out, if Voldemort finds out you're helping me, he'll kill you. Yes, but... But we will not discuss that. Drink your tea, Potter. 